Welcome to Need for Speed Heat! This is Need for Speed 2019 officially revealed. So welcome to Need for Speed Heat. Obviously, this game is gonna have a huge focus on the cops. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the cops and much, much more like the career mode, all of the cars in the game online, the customization, how the game sorta of, kinda of works, and much, much more. However, coming up very shortly, I am heading to Gamescom next week and will be able to get hands-on with Need for Speed Heat gameplay. So, if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe because it's gonna be up here first. So if you want to see how the cars handle my first impressions of the game, make sure you subscribe because that will be coming next week. For the moment though, let's jump into the Need for Speed Heat trailer and under the hood and rip apart everything Need for Speed related. Let's actually start talking about something that we uh, don't actually know just yet. So obviously there was the trailer for the game and the under the hood and um, neither of those actually included a release date for the game. Obviously we know based on past trends Need for Speed always likes to launch around November or December. Well that will probably be the case here but we just don't have an official release date right now so we'll have to see in the future but imagine November, December, this game is going to be coming out. Hopefully, we'll hear about it next week, but I don't know just yet. Let's move it on to something we actually know about, though. Let's start talking about the events and how Need for Speed Heat actually functions as a game. So there's actually two ways to play Need for Speed Heat. If you're running around in the middle of the day, you'll just be doing normal events set up by Palm City, which is the, the map. That's the name of the place where you'll be driving around. We'll talk about Palm City in a little bit. Let's start, let's continue talking about these events though. If you're racing in the middle of the day, you will be racing for cold hard cash. You'll be going up in very official looking events with other races and doing official events set up by the city. It all pretty straightforward. However, if you're racing at night, the city gets flipped on its head and you're gonna be doing underground street races. Racing between the lights with a lot of underground slash Fast and Furious vibes, it looks really cool. There's people lining the streets left, right, and center. And if you win these races, you won't be racing for money, you'll actually be racing for your reputation. Now specifically, Need for Speed called out the street racing, which you can obviously do in name, right? Or the drifting, which again, day or night. However, they never officially called out drag racing or off-road racing from Need for Speed Payback. I don't actually know if there's drag racing in Need for Speed Heat or if there's any off-road races, we'll have to see in the future, but for right now we know street racing and drift racing or drift races are confirmed so far. However, what about those other missions from Need for Speed Payback, the runner missions? Well, let's start talking about the cops because that's where things get really interesting. So in the day, the cops just sort of go about and do their thing. If you ignore them, they'll ignore you for the most part. I would imagine if you T-bone a cop, yeah, they won't be too pleased and they'll start coming after you. However, for the most part, you'll see them in their Crown Vicks just doing their things and probably eating a couple donuts. At night though, again, the city gets flipped on its head and the cops are aggressive. You've got this guy whose name is Lieutenant Mercer, who says some things at the very start of the game. Nice ride, but I'm gonna need those keys right now. I said right now! He is gonna be the head honcho who will be hunting you down left, right, and center all throughout your time playing Need for Speed Heat. He doesn't have the old Ford Crown Victorias coming after you. He's got things like the Z28 Camaro, the C7 Corvettes, and although we don't see them in the trailer, I would imagine there are some Rhinos and Dodge Chargers as well. I would imagine as well you'll probably be facing down some cops when you're doing some races at night i.e. your runner style missions are probably back. Based off the name of the game, one would imagine that the cops in this game are gonna be super super aggressive and obviously there's gonna be a huge focus on the cops in this game so fingers crossed they are super aggressive and you properly have to work to get away from them. However, we'll have to see. One of the things I know next week we are gonna do some pursuit races so stay tuned for that and subscribe if you want to see me running away from some cops in Need for Speed Heat. 
Anyways, let's talk about this map a little bit. I mentioned it before, Palm City. That is the name of the map. It is this huge city right on the coast and is very heavily based off of Miami. Throughout the trailer, we've got all these vibrant looking colors all over the screen. These sort of like these almost like an 80s theme as well with the font of the actual logo. You're ripping it through palm trees and down the coast and even onto a beach in one scene. It all looks very, very cool. However, one thing that I didn't actually notice in the trailer or couldn't notice was any proper good driving roads. The only thing that was really shown off in the trailer was this huge expansive city, right? However, there were no like mountain roads. There was no off-roading, so we'll have to see. Hopefully, fingers crossed, there's some very, very good drift roads and some proper mountain passes for us to mess around with in our tuner work. cars, and we'll, we'll, we'll have to see, though. Speaking of those tuner cars and those cop cars, I feel like we should mention some of them. So, I'm not gonna mention every car that we spotted in this video, that would simply take too long. If you'd like to check out all of the cars that we spotted, there will be a link down below. Jack actually put together an awesome article talking about all of them, so if you'd like to check okay, that out, link is, is down way. below. There are a couple standouts, though, for Need for Speed Heat. Obviously, first of all, the Volvo Polestar, which is going to be the cover car for Need for Speed Heat. You see, this thing goes through countless iterations of itself being painted, having body kits tossed on, a bunch of different wings, super cool car. That thing looks like it should be very, very fun to mess around with. We've also got your normal stuff like your Porsches, your Dodge Vipers, or Nissan GTR, and as well, Ferrari is back. We've got a glimpse of a Ferrari 488. Ferrari is officially back for Need for Speed Heat. It looks to be completely bone stock in Need for Speed 2015. We couldn't even swap out the rims, and I would imagine that's going to be the case for Need for Speed Heat as well. One of the things I didn't notice in the trailer was any evidence of any hypercars. Obviously, one of the cool things about Need for Speed Payback, we had things like the Porsche 918, we had the 4 GT, the Koenigsegg Agera, Regera, a bunch of really, really cool cars, and I really enjoyed driving around in them, and hopefully they make the return in this game. They had some awesome customization but we will again have to see. And of course, it wouldn't be Need for Speed without its plethora of tuner cars. You've got RX-7s, R34s, a bunch of BMW M cars from throughout the years. You've got 350Zs. There is a bunch of cool tuner cars on the list. If you'd like to check them out, like I said, link is down below. Anyways, I briefly mentioned the customization. Let's jump into that in a little bit more depth. Obviously, customization is what makes That's Need for really Speed Need for Speed, and it's back, and it's better than ever. I'll try my best to show this off next week, so make sure you subscribe for that. However, of course, all your normal things are back, like you'll be able to wide-body your car. Airbag, air suspension is also back. You can mess with headlights, rear wings, front splitters. All the usual stuff that you're familiar with in Need for Speed will be present in Need for Speed Heat customization. However, Things change when we get to the performance customization. Speed cards are gone and forgotten about, and we're just gonna pretend that they never existed in the first place. I would imagine you'll be able to buy parts from stores. I hope they make it an easy process. However, we know one way you're gonna be able to earn parts is. is by winning races. For doing certain races, you'll be able to earn certain parts to your car, which is pretty cool, but hopefully that's not the only way to get them. Again, stay tuned for more. Hopefully we'll have some more details on this next week when I jump into the customization myself. Anyways, now I mentioned at the beginning that you can actually sort of control the time in this game, and you're constantly gonna be jumping back and forth between missions in the day and missions at night. And now, it would be kind of annoying if you had to wait the entire time if you were in the day and you needed to do some missions at night. Well, you can actually control the day or the time of day by going back to your garage and taking a little siesta. If you jump into your garage, you can actually skip time Last forward time. and you'll be able to skip either into the middle of the night or into the middle of the day to do whichever missions you want at any point, which is awesome. I honestly wish more games did this and gave us the freedom to choose what time of day and honestly even what weather we were able to choose. So props Need for Speed Heat for that one. Now, let's mention the handling because Need for Speed actually specifically called it out 
as having a brand new handling model for Need for Speed Heat. In the trailer, there's no actual proper gameplay in here. There's like 0.2 seconds of gameplay, which is kind of annoying because you don't really get a good sense for how the cars move around. However, next week when I jump in, I'll be testing it myself. Obviously, the, 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 the handling in previous Need for Speed games has been its downfall. I cross my fingers because the handling itself will either make or break this game. And finally, let's talk about, honestly, the second most important thing for me personally in Need for Speed Heat. The multiplayer. And this is where I get a little nervous, honestly, because throughout the entire trailer and throughout the entire news release, there was not a single mention of online. Need for Speed Payback completely dropped the ball in terms of online and not having online free roam at launch being the biggest mistake I've seen in recent memory from a car game. Hopefully Need for Speed Heat picks up where Need for Speed Payback failed to and hopefully has a very very good online system but again we will have to see. I would imagine we won't see this next week, but as soon as we do get some Need for Speed Heat online details, I will be sure to update you here on the channel. And that's just about it for everything Need for Speed Heat related. What are you guys most excited about? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm super pumped for the customization as per always. That Volvo Polestar just looks so, so cool and I can't wait to jump in and mess around with it. But honestly, most importantly to me is gonna be the handling. I can't wait to try it out myself and push the cars to the limit and see how they do. Next week is gonna be a very, very interesting week. Make sure you subscribe for that. I will see you guys then with some Need for Speed Heat gameplay. Thank you so much for watching and I'll keep you guys posted on everything Need for Speed related. I'll see you guys then. Bye!